now joined by Willie Anderson himself here on CBS Sports HQ. Willie, congratulations on yet again being named a finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the 2023 class, an honor in its own right. But what emotions does that spark for you? Um, a lot because I, I know how many men um, have gone before me. Um, I know many people have been waiting for a long time to be um, as a finalist. So it being my second year as a finalist, I kind of know what the process is right now. It's, um, it's kind of painstaking a little bit, but um, I'm proud to be here and represent people. <clears throat> but, I, but I do understand and, and understand that there are so many guys that um, should be in this position um, that I feel I should be in the Hall of Fame um, before me. And I, um, I respect and I'm, I'm honored to be in this position. Well, we'll be rooting you on, that's for sure. Now, it's been fun to follow along this Bengals team, the transformation, the success of the organization. What has it been like for you to see the excitement following these playoff runs? Just, uh, I'm glad these guys had a chance to experience this. This, uh, because you know, as we as we know, early in my career, the Bengals, we we weren't that good. You know, we just started getting the, the corner didn't turn around until Marvin Lewis came about. But seeing these guys right now, these young guys having fun and, and, and not being able to go through the things that we went through, um, the organization has grown. And I think that Joe Burrow and these guys, uh, these guys playing great football, is benefiting from the organization and change mindset, change wise, and they're winning and got a, got a chance to go back to back to the bowl again. So, so as alumni, we're, we're very definitely not happy for these guys. I want to ask you, too, about Joe Burrow. He's quickly becoming one of the best quarterbacks in Bengals franchise history. You know, some making the case that he's tops in the league now. What have you seen personally out of his play? Just his leadership. Um, I told Joe this summer, I talked to him this summer. I said, man, um, one of the biggest things I'm proud of you about is how you lead your guys. Um, there were some times his first couple of years where he was getting, you know, he was getting ramsacked. He was getting hit a lot. And I said, bro, I've never seen you throw the ball down in disgust. I've never seen you cursing your lineman out. You know what I mean? I said, in the long run, that's going to make those guys want to fight and, and, and kill for you, bro. And uh, I think you see that right now with the backup guys right now. Those backup guys are playing at a level right now. you got three backups, I think, playing right now. They're playing at a level, but they're like, hey, man, this guy is such a good dude, such a good leader. I don't want to be the guy that, that gets him hit or, or gets him hurt in things, you know, so because – you have a guy like Joe Burrow as a lineman. You want to see him succeed because he's so cool with you. Everyday life is so cool with you. He's not a prima donna. He's always giving the lineman credit. And when things haven't been so well up front in the past, he's never directed any criticism towards off of the line. So you, you can tell his guys got his back because they have, he, he has their back. You can definitely always tell when the O-line respects the quarterback that's behind yes. them. And I think we were all yeah. impressed with the way that the O-line stepped up last week. You know, you mentioned it, mm -hmm. all those injuries. I know it's the next man up mentality and these guys have a job for a reason. But were you surprised by the way that that O-line held up? You gotta give a guy like Frank Pollock, O-line coach, credit. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times O-line coaches don't get the credit they should be. You know, some guys are good, some guys are not. But I think in Frank's case, to have three guys ready to play on the road, in those conditions, you got to give Frank Pollock um, a lot of credit as a coach, being able to, to develop those guys. Because you got to think during the season, your backup linemen don't get them that many reps during the course of the season. Like they're always telling the backup guys, "Hey, you'll play away," but it may go weeks and weeks and weeks before a guy plays again. You see a young guy like Jackson Carmen come in and play was playing guard, now he's playing left tackle, the position he played back in college. What those guys did last week last week was unbelievable. It was great as a former lineman, as a former Bengals lineman. It was great to see. And I, like I say, I think that credit goes to Frank Pollock having those guys prepared to play. Yeah, they were ready to go. And before we move on to the rest of the offense, I got to ask you, you clearly have a personal relationship with Joe Burrow. Is he as chill as he seems from an outside perspective? The, the times I've, I've, I've ran into Joe, he is. Like, he's just a, he, he's a very confident guy. Like, uh, I kind of liken it to, you know, I, I played with some quarterbacks with uh, from Boomer Sizing for a year, Jeff Blake, uh, Carson Palmer, and all those guys have, have, the, have the, the same kind of confidence. You know what I mean? Boomer was a little bit more out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Flamboyant with it, and he had every right to be. But but Joe Joe is used that, just, just, a, just a confidence that everybody can feed off of. I mean, the DBs feed off of it. The wide receivers feed off of it. So usually, when you have that guy at quarterback, the entire team, not just your offense, the entire team feeds off it. The assistant coaches feeds off it. And he's one of those guys that 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 puts that kind of confidence in everybody on both sides of the ball. I know it's kind of cliche to say it, but 
the good quarterbacks, the great ones, they do that. And that's the reason they, they're paid a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely has a swagger about him, that's for sure. Now, when you look at the rush game, Joe Mixon, he's expecting a hefty workload in this weekend's game. He's one of the best running backs in the game. So it seems like the Bengals offense has created a pretty good balance. What do you think? I think with, along with Joe and um, um, Samara P. Ryan, they have a great one-two punch. I mean, P. Ryan comes in when, when Joe was hurt or had the concussion for a couple of games. P. Ryan was coming in, you know, playing like a starter. He, he runs very hard. Joe is definitely a Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl um, year in the yard running back when he's when he's healthy. Um, so that's that's kind of one of the underrated parts of the Bengals fo football game. You know, um, Joe Burrow doesn't have to throw the ball 40 times to win. He throws about 25, 30 times, and he's very accurate and may get you 20 completions while the running game is going to get you five yards of carry. When he goes to play action to Joe Mixon and P. Ryan, the play action pull guys up, and you start seeing receivers running wide open. <laughs> you know, it's kind of simple, but they're going to bruise you. I think last week, um, uh, back to the old line again, those guys up front, they were bruising the, the Buffalo Bills uh, front line, and um, it showed in the running game, and it showed in the, uh, in the precision that Joe had in the passing game. Definitely a different challenge coming up this weekend. So before we let you go, AFC Championship, what's your score prediction? What do you think? I don't know what score is going to be, but I know it's going to be. A, I'm saying it's going to be a game within three. Um, I think Kansas City is going to come out and play the game of their life. But I, in the end, I believe, I just, just, I'm a, uh, you know, a fan being a homer. I think the Bengals have a, the, the better team. They have, a, they have the better talent. I think that they are, they are a terrible matchup for the Kansas City Chiefs. Even though I respect the hell out of Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes, um, Andy Reid, um, um, my ex teammate uh, Eric Bieniemy, and those guys on the D line, the front, the front, the front forty guard on the defensive line, I respect them a lot. But I personally think the Bengals have too much. I think the Bengals going to win by three. You don't get here by chance, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Willie. Best of luck to your Bengals along the way, and we're sending you well wishes when it comes to the Hall of Fame. It's an incredible honor to be a finalist. Thanks for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Thank you very much. And you'll Thank find you. that AFC Championship game between the Bengals and the Chiefs. It's Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson, Evan Washburn, Jay Feely, and Gene Steratore will be on the call. You can also find the game streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.